Bible Baptist Church with a message out of God's Word from Pastor Kim Hayes. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 through 3. Wherefore seeing, why don't you stand together? Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Did you get that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him. For consider him. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray today in that wonderful, matchless name lifted above all names, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to think about Jesus today. We want to consider him. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Consider him. You see, that's what the writer of Hebrews said. After he rehearsed for us the great faith hall of fame chapter, after he gave to us and connected the dots from the Old Testament saints all the way through all those who gave their lives as a martyr for the cause of Jesus Christ, He brought it to our doorstep and he said, I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to consider him. Today, that's what these songs have been all about. They've been laser directed right at Jesus. Every heart, every mind, every thought now belongs to him. Consider him. Now, when you consider Jesus, you got to consider his person. You've got to consider who Jesus is. You've got to think about Jesus and who he is to you. I don't want you to just think about him as some great teacher or some great figure from the past, some prophet. I want you to think about him now and consider him as the scripture has revealed and as these songs have set the stage for this consideration, this thought. I want you to think about him today. And when you look at verse two, it really breaks it down into these three thoughts because the first thing that we read is that we're to consider him the author and the finisher of our faith. Folks, you don't have to look to another. (laughs) I, 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 I want you to know we're advertising one today and his name is Jesus Christ. We're not, we're not, there's not many ways to heaven. There's not many roads to heaven. There's not, there's one way. And that one way is through Jesus Christ. And so today, consider him. He's the author. He's the one that took care of everything. He's the one that, that literally came from heaven, dispatched from heaven through the womb of a virgin and came to this earth to die for the dead of your sin. And I want you to think about Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Second part of this, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. You see, you can't look at Jesus and not consider his person, but also his passion. I want you to think about that passion. What did he do? He came, and he had one goal in the 33 and a half year span of life on this earth, in that body that he borrowed. He came and robed himself in flesh for one purpose, and that was to go to the cross. And by the way, he's the only one that could do this and accomplish it. He's the only one that could take care of our debt of sin. (laughs) I want you to think about his passion. He had you in mind. He had me in mind. 
It's you and I today that are in the target of His grace, His passion. What He endured, no other human being could do this. No other person could do what He did. You know, from the very beginning, when they took Him and made accusation against Him, the Bible says He opened not His mouth. As a sheep dumb before its shearers, Jesus Christ, listen to me, he came and willingly, oh, listen, he willingly paid the ultimate sacrifice that you could not pay. See, all those sins have to be accounted for, that debt has to be reckoned. His passion was sufficient. He took him and buffeted him with open-palmed and clenched fists. Plucked his beard from his face. They spit on him. Cat of nine tails. Literally ripping the flesh and muscle, and sinew, lacerating his back, making it hamburger meat. He still went to the cross. He still had the view of the cross. He still had the mission. He still had the purpose. He still had the the work of the cross. They took him. After he carried that cross up the Via Della Rosa, after he, at one point, even succumbed and stumbled, another carried his cross out of the crowd. And when they got the place, I believe I've seen with my eyes two different occasions I was privileged to travel to Israel. I believe I've seen the place where our Lord was crucified. I lifted up my eyes to this place of a skull, and I just imagined, and I somehow in my mind's eye, I thought back to that moment that my Lord's hands and feet were nailed to a cross. He was lifted up, and I thought there, there our Savior was. So moving, tears began to flow, flood my face and I looked up and I thought there's where my sins were paid for. There's the work of the cross. There's where it happened. The passion. I thank the Lord it didn't end there. He exited that body and uh, there's a... He left that body on that cross. No man took his life. It is finished. He uttered and cried from the cross. Seven sayings. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. He gave up the ghost. He left that lifeless body for disciples to take down and put into a borrowed tomb. Three days later, a conversation between Satan and death, wasn't that? A great depiction of what transpired. And on that third day, what happened? (laughs) Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. And you and I are benefactors today of the grace of God. And so, the story's not over. His person, his passion, I want you to consider today. If we're going to think about Jesus, we've got to consider his person. If we're going to think about Jesus, we've got to consider his passion. And if we're going to think about Jesus, we've got to consider his position. Where is he at? As you finish verse 2, you read, And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Where is Jesus right now? Right now. Right now. Where is Jesus? He's by the Father's right hand awaiting for the moment that he would be dispatched back to this earth the second time. To come back. 
the second coming of Jesus Christ. And before that event takes place, at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, what event are we waiting on? The rapture. The catching away of all the saints. Could happen before we dismiss this service today. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a little excited about it today. I'm just a little bit more excited today than I ever have been. We're closer than we've ever been. Folks, just blink your eyes. We're going to be there. His position is he's by the throne of... He is seated by the throne of God. We read the Revelation and we know how this thing ends up. We know how, what's the, how the book, back of the book finishes. And listen, God wins. God won on the cross. <laughs> His darling son sacrificed for the dead of our sin. And now, folks, all that have, all you have to do, all that remains is for every one of Adam's race to say yes to Jesus. God's just waiting on you to do that. Maybe you arrived today and, and you didn't really know why you came. Maybe somebody invited you. Maybe And you're just here. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit of God's dealing in your heart. And there's a tightness in your throat and chest. And there's also something going on. You think the preacher's preaching at you, but it's really not this preacher. It's the real preacher in the room, the Holy Spirit of God, doing the real preaching in the room, taking the Word of God and just convincing you of this simple matter that you need a Savior. That Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. 